Today's podcast is proudly brought to you by Plus Fitness Minyama. Experience the plus side. Enjoy 24-7 access to 220 plus gyms, flexible memberships, and dynamic classes. Found locally in Minyama on the Nicklin Way, give them a call on 5444-8111 or look them up on Instagram at Plus Fitness Minyama. Drop in and say g'day or look them up online, but I love the local support. Here at the podcast, we support local as do they, so please give them a support, follow them on Instagram or drop in and say hello and check out their amazing facility at Minyama. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Paul's Body Engineering Podcast. Today, running solo, I'm going to talk about a topic that may, in fact, trigger a few people. Now, it's not a negative, far from it, but I'm going to give brutal honesty. I want to always deliver the truth, the facts, um, everything I do in terms of my coaching, everything I do in terms of, obviously, the content I provide is all backed up by research, by evidence, by science. Therefore... While it may be somewhat confronting for some people, it is very much the truth of the matter. And, you know, it's often hard to hear it sometimes. And I completely accept that. So what I'm talking about today is, in fact, you know, what are you prepared to sacrifice? Because any goal that you've got requires some element of sacrifice. Now, when we talk about health and fitness or in terms of health and fitness and, you know, the majority of people that uh, have a health and fitness goal, it's primarily based around weight loss. You've got to be willing to give up a few things in order to achieve that goal. And what I mean by that is, you know, you might have to give up alcohol. You might have to give up takeaway meals, meals out on the weekend, um, date nights, um, you know, junk food, processed food. You might have to give up some time where you then have to reallocate it to more training, more walking, things like that. And a lot of the time... And and I say a lot of the time because I'm basing this on the 10 years of experience I have had in this industry... A lot of people will are not willing to do that because they feel that that part of their life is very important. And look, I appreciate that. I completely respect that. But in order to achieve your goal, particularly if it is a weight loss focused goal, you know, it's going to be a lot slower. It's going to be a lot longer simply because all the hard work you're doing throughout the course of the week, which is when most people are very adherent to a plan, is then undone throughout the course of the weekend depending on you know the severity of um the amount of food that you eat the amount of alcohol you consume how long that lasts for things like that so it can have a detrimental effect and it can have somewhat of a an ongoing yo-yo effect where you're really good you're really good you're really good then not so good then you're really good really good then not so good and it's just this constant ongoing cycle and people get frustrated with that but at the same time they're not willing to sacrifice or it's not actually pointed out to them that's the other thing too when you're sort of in this routine bubble structure where your blinkers are on, you're just surviving day to day, going about your job, being a parent, whatever the, the case may be. Sometimes you don't look beyond that and you don't actually get to sit there for a moment and do an audit on your lifestyle and go, okay, I actually need to make some changes here because the buck stops with me, okay? I need to take more ownership of this situation and I actually need to make some change in order for me to achieve these goals. Otherwise, I'm just going to spin my wheels and go around in circles like a goldfish in a, gold, in a goldfish bowl. And, you know, I've read numerous quotes over the years, and one of them that stuck to me is, you know, in order to, and I'm paraphrasing here, in order to make some serious change, you don't want to be at the same spot you are this time next year. And a lot of people are, because they spin their wheels. They continually look for shortcuts. They continually look for quick results, um, you know, aggressive diets, a change of diet, a change of lifestyle um, that may not be conducive to them. And that's what needs to be considered here is that all of these sorts of factors need to be customized to the individual. Every single person is different on this planet. They all have different approaches to things. They think differently. They act differently. They have different ways of going about doing stuff. So you have to have something that's going to work best for you. And it's really important that that is a serious consideration. So when I talk about sacrifice, you know, are you willing to give up a couple of takeout meals 
each week? Are you willing to give out that, give up that bottle of vodka on the weekend? Are you willing to give up, you know, the the date night with your partner and have a date night at home? You know, it sounds simple, it sounds logical, and it sounds like the right thing to do. But a lot of people are not prepared to do that. You know, I, I often have that in a in a discussion with a new client. They'll they'll say, look, I want to achieve this. I want to drop 10 kilos, I want to get stronger, I want to feel better, but I'm not prepared to give up my weekends. Like straight away they get on the defensive. I'm not prepared to give up my weekends. And and I respect that, that's fine. If that's your routine, if that's your lifestyle, that's fine. But you've also got to understand that sometimes those weekends are your Achilles heel. Sometimes those weekends are the undoing of your hard work. And that's where you you get frustrated. And a lot of the time, because of that fact, people throw in the towel. You know, I've had clients or new clients start up with me and within a matter of weeks, they pulled the pin simply because they had a, a too high an expectation on the outcome. They thought they were going to get results a lot quicker and they're incredibly impatient and thereby they move on and they generally then go to another coach or someone who's offering something that may be unrealistic in the terms of someone who, you know, in a professional, but to someone who doesn't know any better. And again, with all due respect, they see the dream, they, uh, they are offered something that they believe can be achieved and they go in pursuit of that. Whereas, you know, this process, in order to effectively lose weight, in order to effectively keep it off, and in order to effectively be sustainable with that goal, with that result, you have to be prepared to put in the time. It takes a lot of hard work, it takes a lot of dedication, it takes a lot of commitment, it takes a lot a crap lot, a crap lot, that's not even a word, a crap load of consistency and you have to be willing to give things up along the way. And let's put this into, you know, normal sort of, a, a normal context, right? If you're, say you're in your 20s or early 20s, late teens, just left school and your aspiration is to become a doctor, okay? You want to be a doctor, whether it's a surgeon, a specialist, a GP, whatever. You know full well that what's in front of you in terms of study and professional qualifications. You have to do four years of medical, uh, a medical degree at university. Then you've got to go on and do four years as a resident at a hospital. Then you've got to go on and do a further two years in your specialty field. And there's countless amounts of study and professional development along the way. That's potentially 10 years before you achieve your goal. 10 years. So from your 20s to your 30s, the majority of your life is spent studying, learning, and in a professional sense in your career. That's it. So that's what people are prepared to give up to seek out that career because long-term, it's obviously going to benefit them. Financially, they're going to be set up. They're going to have a really well-rounded career. They're going to um, obviously be able to retire at a a good age. So they're thinking long-term. So why can't we apply that thinking to our own lifestyle, our own health? Health should be significantly more important than career, right? 100% it should be. So why can't we take that same application and put it into our health? I'm prepared right now to work on my health for the next two to four years to improve it to a point where it's going to be sustainable for the next 25 to 30 years. Why can't we think like that? It is a fascinating piece. and My theory is that a lot of people are very impatient due to the now world that we live in in regards to social media. We get instant gratification from a like, from a share, from a post. We flick through things. We have a three-second attention span, all those sorts of things. And unfortunately, that then relays over to our own sense of accomplishment when it comes to health and fitness. Whereas through significant research, through through significant science and plenty of top-line coaches who have high profiles on social media support this, It takes time. If you want to lose 10 kilos and keep it off, it may take you a year to do that, okay? But people aren't prepared to do that because they've seen at the local gym and the six-week challenge, people are knocking off 10 kilos in that space of time through an 800-calorie diet. Now, we don't support that, okay? I've got no problem with challenges at all. It's the dieting side of things and the aggressive nature at which they're um, implemented that I have a problem with, not to mention the education beyond the challenge. But more point to that you know you i go back to my original point you've got to be prepared to give things up you know the person or the the student becoming a doctor over that 10 year period is giving up time with friends they're giving up social uh time going out on weekends because they have to study they have to commit they've got to obviously get really good grades um over that entire period so they're giving up that they're sacrificing that to for, for their own future their own career their own ambitions so why can't we apply that to our health 
Why can't we sacrifice the occasional takeaway meal? Why can't we sacrifice more alcohol? Why can't we sacrifice you know, the, the countless meals out on a weekend to ensure that we have a successful seven day turnaround on our weight loss goal for one week? And then we relay that into another week and then another week. You know, those of us that have been fortunate enough to do bodybuilding shows know the sacrifice required because the end result is so big and there's so much put into it because you're getting up on stage in next to nothing being judged by a panel of your peers. So that goal is so tremendously large that you then commit to the process and you track your food and you train five to six days a week and you maximize your sleep and all these sorts of things. Whereas for a general lifestyle person, there's not a lot that they are willing to give up, but they expect a huge amount in return. You know, oh, I'm going to the gym, you know, I eat pretty good. I'm going to the gym five days. I'm, I'm eating pretty good, but I'm not seeing the results. Well, let's ha- take a closer look at things, shall we? How's your weekend look? Oh, you know, I, I go out for a meal every now and then. I have a couple of drinks with the girls. There it is right there. And while it sounds innocent and doesn't sound like much until you know the quantifications around the calories of those couple of drinks or those meals out or the additional snacks you have and things like that, you don't realize how much influence that can have on a successful week. So it's really important that those sorts of things are administered early and you are willing to make some sacrifices. Now, you may not be willing to start and that's okay. Like I had a... um, a client messaged me this morning. We've been going back and forth for a little while now, but she'd previously worked with me for a period of time before she went away and had a baby. Totally respect that, you know. She's now come back after obviously recovering from uh, the pregnancy, the birth, getting her hormones checked, all those sorts of things. And the first line in the message that she sent me was, Paul, I'm ready to get back into it. And, and again, I'm paraphrasing. Straight away there, that context alone, I know she's ready to go. She wants to hook in. She wants to commit. She wants to get some results. So... If you're not prepared to do that, but the overarching sort of premise is, I still want to get some results. I want to look like this person. No, no, no. You need to have stronger goals because you need to be willing to commit and you need to be willing to make sacrifices. You know, more often than not, it is about giving up the food, giving up the alcohol, which obviously culturally, Australians in particular are very fond of. And I get that. I've got no problem with it. I had a couple of ginger beers on the weekend, but it doesn't steer me away from my goals. My goals are optimal health. And I'm achieving that through five days of quality training, through eating really, really good for probably 90% of the time. And I'm consistent over long periods, lengthy periods of time. There's something, uh, my wife actually shared a post with me this morning that I wanted to share because it's very relevant to this topic. And that is, um, I'll read it word for word. Progress takes forever. That's the kind of the point, okay? Progress does take forever. That's kind of the point. Body transformation is bloody hard. It requires patience, discipline, gritty consistency for months and years on end. But here's the thing. That time is going to pass anyway. You might as well make the most of it. And that's so true. The time is going to go anyway. So whether you want to commit to a six-week challenge, that time's going to go by. Or whether you're prepared to dig in for the long haul and see the results, the desired results that you want in terms of a loss of weight, an improved physique, a stronger physique, more energy, a couple of sizes down in your clothes, things like that, you have to be willing to put in the time. And straight away, time is a sacrifice because obviously we only get it for an instant and then it's gone. You know, we're now in the middle of March. Actually, we're three quarters of the way through March, technically. Easter is almost here and then winter is almost upon us. So, A third of the year is almost done, and yet some people really haven't made any inroads and will be that example I used earlier where this time next year, they'll be in the same spot and they'll be wondering what they need to do differently. Well, you know, if you've tried multiple diets, if you've tried different challenges, if you've tried different programs and processes and things like that, and you're spinning your wheels, constantly looking for short-term results... Maybe you need to think longer. Maybe you need to think outside the box. Maybe you need to take all of that money, all of that time, all of that energy and invest it in a process that's actually going to work. But also understand and completely embrace the fact that it will take time. Consistency and time. Patience. You've got to have patience. And I know it's a struggle at the moment with people. I see it every day on the roads. We are so impatient just driving to and from work. Whenever there's a bank up of cars, people get agitated. You can see it in their demeanor. So it is a common occurrence. It is a common problem. But 
if you have the knowledge and the understanding, then you will put in the time. And particularly if your goals are strong enough. You know, if, you've, if you're sick and tired of carrying around that extra 10, 15, 20 kilos, whatever it may be, and you're absolutely over it, you've tried multiple things that didn't work, then you will probably be very set on your conviction to achieve a goal and, and achieve an outcome, and you will stick to it. You know, it's all well and good to start, and I see that often, and I refer back to my previous example with clients where they'll start with good intentions, they're very excited, but then, you know, four weeks in, they start to lose interest or they start to not follow their, their, their um, nutrition as closely, they start to waver with their training, and, you know, our focus deteriorates very, very quickly. The ultimate situation with that, and this is obviously supported again by science, is that we do the same thing over and over and over again for a lengthy period of time. And that's how we get results because the body adapts and it repeats itself through frequency to achieve better results. So if your training program ran for 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 32 weeks would be the ultimate because you will get better over time because you're doing the same movement patterns. Yet most people start to lose interest at the six to eight week mark. So unfortunately, as a coach, we've had to modify our training programs to suit that. Same with nutrition. You know, often people will come to me and say, I need a meal plan. I can't track calories, need a meal plan. Okay, perfect, no problem. Here are the things about a meal plan. Um, you know, first one is obviously they are very regimented, they're very monotonous, they can get boring from time to time. No, 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 it's totally okay. That works well for me. I just want a meal plan. After four weeks, that person's coming to me going, can we change it up because I'm getting sick of it. And granted, four weeks is a long time, but at the same time, I go back to my original point, what are you prepared to sacrifice? Let's just stick to the basics. Eat the same thing day in, day out for a period of time. Get a baseline, get it going. Get some monotony happening. Get some momentum happening and you will see results. But if you want to continually change things up simply because you don't have the focus or the discipline to stick to it for long periods of time, well, this is going to be you in another 12 months. And, you know, for me personally, I want that lifestyle where in 30 years from now, so 30 years from now, I'll be 75, you know, potentially retired, hopefully retired. And I want to be running around with my grandkids. I want to be mobile. I want to be active. I want to be traveling with my beautiful wife. I want to see the world. I want to be, you know, able to climb mountains and ride horses and go swimming and go fishing and be highly active because of all the work I'm doing right now. The work I'm doing right now is going to pave the way for that existence, but I have to do the work now. So, you know, the simple process that you should be taking Remove as much processed food as you can. Don't go down the processed food aisle. Clean up your diet. What, why do we need to eat processed food? There's another sacrifice right there. The cleaner you're going to eat, the better the result. You know, There's another quote that I actually shared it yesterday, I believe. And we've gotten to a point in society where everyone eats processed food. So when you start eating clean food, so you know, organically clean, just fruits, vegetables, whole grains, etc., People immediately assume you're on a diet. Immediately. When all you're doing is just eating clean. You know, and then there's obviously the concern around a lot of people where um, judgment comes into play, you know. You go to social outings. Oh, do you want a beer? No, thanks. Oh, really? Why not? And then you have to explain yourself. Where in point of fact is, no, you don't have to explain yourself. If you've chosen to be healthier, well, that's uh, you should be commended for that, not judged for that. I'm sorry to say. You know, if you choose not to have takeout meal or if you go out for a meal with a family catch-up, for example, and everyone's ordering, you know, steak and chips or whatever, and you go, no, no, I'm, I'm just going to have my Pepsi Max and my water and I'll eat when I get home. Straight away, oh, really? Why? You know, there's immediate judgment. And a lot of the time, and this is the, 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 the big kicker that a lot of people don't think about, is a lot of the time when you do explain it or people are aware that you're looking after yourself a little bit more, that judgment comes from a place of insecurity. You know, so that judgment is... Coming from a place where the individual who is judging often goes, you know, inside them, they say, oh, well, they can do it, but I'm not doing it. I'm not prepared to do it. I don't want to do it. But in retrospect, they actually do want to do it because they want to get better. They want to get leaner. They want to look better. They want to improve themselves in some capacity. So don't feel bad if you're making those sacrifices to better your own life, to better your own health. Don't feel bad at all. Stick up for yourself. Make sure that you hold yourself to the highest degree, the highest standard. And, you know, it's okay to turn away a drink. It's okay to say no to certain things. And there's another sacrifice. It's okay to turn down an invite to a party or an event or a gathering simply because you would rather focus on you. That is okay. 
There is no problem with that whatsoever. So I get back to my original point. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up to achieve these goals? And as I said, I use the doctor the doctor study example. This applies across life. You know, if you want to, if you have massive aspirations in terms of your career, you've got to be prepared to give stuff up. You know, for me, in my career, I have to give up time on the weekends because I need to work. You know, when bodybuilding season comes around, I'm back to back weekends without fail. So I'm working seven days a week for months on end. During the time right now, I'm putting in time on the weekend to study because I have further ambitions in terms of my education. So I have to sacrifice time. And sometimes that, um, that works against me in terms of you know, spending time with my family. But they're aware of it, they support it, and there's no problem. But again, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for the greater good because I wanna be set up in retirement. I wanna make sure that I am at an optimal level in terms of my health, my career, my relationships, etc. And the only way to do that is put in the hard work now. I'm not saying you have to hustle and work 24-7, seven days a week. Far from it. But we can all make sacrifices for the better good. We can all make sacrifices to maximize our time, to improve our health, to improve our efficiency, to improve our relationship, to improve our careers. And, you know, stop wasting time on social media. Stop watching endless hours of TV on Netflix or whatever. You know, there's so many things that we can give up to further advance our cause, but we're not willing to do so. And that's the hard fact of the matter. And that's the truth of the matter too. And sometimes it's hard to hear. But I hope from this podcast alone, people hear, they listen, and they make some changes. And I'm not saying you have to give up everything. You don't have to give up everything. But smaller improvements over time, you know, maybe for the remainder of March, you cut down on your social media use by half an hour a day, right? That adds up. And then in April, maybe you cut down your Netflix watching by, by an hour a day. Things like that, that seem so simple and so innocent, yet over the course of the week, there's seven hours of time you've just gotten back. Straight away, just off the Netflix alone. Add, add on the social media, there's three and a half hours. So there's 10 and a half hours of time you have then gotten back simply by making a sacrifice. So you can see how it can benefit you. It can really benefit you. And you can then reinvest that time into something else. Now, if you're willing to cut, uh, say, Netflix or Binge or any of those streaming services out altogether, that money can then be reinvested into something else that you're more passionate about, like your health. So, you know, sacrifice is, is a two-way street. Yes, it sounds negative. Yes, it sounds hard. But there's always a positive to come from it. And that's what I'm talking about. So, look, I'll leave you on that. Thank you once again for your tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate it. As always, it's really great to see people listening, getting feedback on t- various topics I talk about, but also just the general support and the, the numbers of listeners that are currently with us is amazing. Um, I want to thank personally Plus Fitness Minyama for supporting this particular podcast. They have been fantastic in supporting me um, for a lengthy period of time now. So I'm really appreciative of that. So if you're on the Sunshine Coast and you're looking for a new gym, looking for an amazing facility, go see the guys at Plus Fitness Minyama on the Nicollin Way. It's locally owned and operated. They've got great staff, great equipment, great facility, 24-hour access, dynamic classes. They offer everything. So why not check it out? Now, in terms of my own coaching services, if you're interested, please jump on paulsbodyengineering.com. Everything is there. Otherwise, jump on the link in my bio on my Instagram page and have a look. Alternatively to that, if you'd just like to have a chat, shoot me a DM or a message or an email, and I'll certainly get back to you in very quick succession. So thank you once again. I really appreciate the tune in. And as I say to every client, every single day, have a great day.